Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Control, The Foundation. This is episode 28, and it will be the last episode for a while, until the next DLC, as all we have left to do is two more side missions. Last time we did the 80s neon dripping camera chase side mission, so that just leaves the one we found at the end of the last one, down in the uh, chasm there, and the one where we have to collect ID cards for Emily which we have to do here. Now, I already went ahead and, looking at a quick guide, found out which of the spots I hadn't actually checked. Apparently, I didn't open this door. It was locked, and I guess I just looked at it and went, yep, can't open that. So, we got our last one here. This ID card was for an excavation engineer. Why did so many people abandon their cards down here? Maybe, because they all died, Jesse. All right, so now that we got the cards, we're supposed to just put them into these computers. Apparently, we just go from the left. A layer of dust on this place. Nobody swept here in years. Okay, never Not mind. Ati, no way he'd stand for this. Uh, I guess we'll just There's try an this. Elevator, which I'm sure is super safe. In a space in each terminal for an ID card. Which card goes where? I would hope there are some hints on here. Like. You know, there's guns on this desk, so I guess he's the security chief. But the guide said just go from the left. I didn't read the whole guide, just the start of it. Nope. The hiss of respawn outside. So how do I know if it worked? I guess the elevator will come up if it's right, so I guess I didn't do it right. All right. Oh, there's a note in this wheelbarrow. Ash, request denied. Dr. Ash, as Chief Excavation Officer, it's my job to support the research team, so I got you your machine for that ridiculous sand research project. However, it's also my responsibility to ensure the safety of my crew. Do you know how many trips it took to get an entire bulldozer down here piece by piece? And do you know how many of my guys were lost in those trips? Here's a hint. Too fucking many. Which brings me to my point. I'm writing you today because of this request form that landed on my desk. Apparently you want a lightweight, one or two man, military grade helicopter for the purpose of surveying the vast expanse of columns by air. I bet you didn't even stop to wonder how much time, money, effort, and blood this toy could cost us. Well no sir, I am sorry but I will not subject my men to another month of marching through that death trap upstairs. For Christ's sake, these people have families, not that they ever get to see them anymore. Request denied. Okay, so is this the Chief Excavation Officer? I like that they all just have tools of their respective jobs on their desk. Alright, let's just pull all these cards. I think the security one is right, but that's in the middle, so it could go either way. It sounds like the Hiss are fighting something. I guess there's probably some astral folks out there. Okay, we've got a map, so that would be the cartographer, we've got the excavation officer, um, not really much to go by here, there's this photo, I'm wondering if this is just like the heads of the FBC before they came here, it's definitely not all the directors because I don't think there's been that many. It could be the head of research, I guess. Just, like, the leader desk. And then this one is... Well, there's a... Is that a Geiger counter or a seismograph? I guess it's probably a Geiger counter. It worked. Now I just have to get on a rickety elevator that goes who knows how far down. That really wasn't a very hard puzzle to solve. I guess I really didn't need a hint. Alright, so now we can go down to zero. I'm wondering why the... I guess I don't have this mission selected. I was gonna say, the HUD doesn't have the mission on it. Um, alright. I guess I didn't select it. There we go. Still. Oh, okay, there's a bunch of hiss down here.
So this is not part of the collapsed apartment, but yet it still looks like part of the oldest house. So that's kind of weird. Like, is it still connected to it? Um, sure. If there is a valve, you must turn it. I don't know what that did. All this time down here with no one actually accessing this place, and yet there's still all these snacks. Well, the game still wants me to think there's a fight going on. Checking around if there's any more notes, but I think that was it. I don't know what was up with that one pipe we had to turn. Why would they need such a heavy door down here? Uh, clearly for containment. Okay. That's a that's a new boss. I was about to say, oh, it's just a distorted, but clearly it's not just a distorted because it's shooting a fucking laser from its chest. It does still have the same, like, split-open woman's body, though. Okay, but it is still a distorted because it disappears. It's just one that shoots laser instead of running up to you and then exploding. Okay, I'm gonna need to borrow you. There's not a lot of cover in this room aside from the elevator itself. Alright, she doesn't seem too tough. It's helpful that this guy actually knows where she is, even when she's invisible. Oh. Okay, she can still do the shriek. I mean, I'm glad they at least gave this boss a unique mechanic instead of just, oh, it's just one of the regular enemies, but with more health. However, doing the expeditions is maybe good at fighting a boss version of these. Because in that one, you do just have to fight a, oh, it's just a regular enemy, but stronger. And your shield is very effective at blocking their shriek. That was a decent little boss. Not too annoying, but potentially dangerous. So what's actually back here? I suppose Dr. Ash's notes is what's like back nail, here. Only mini. The proto-nail. I was wondering if I would get a hidden ability point for coming up here. Oh, apparently she's heavy if she shattered that. <laughs> Alright, Dr. Ash's notes, and then this is just a note. Northmore, final warning. To Dr. Theodore Ash Jr., as director of the Federal Bureau of Control and chosen representative slash liaison slash benefactor of the greater authority of the board, I demand your immediate withdrawal from the Foundation. Did he, like, take up the board's way of speaking by having the slash? Prior memo is issued broadly to the Foundation staff called for swift reassignment of all personnel to the upper levels of the house. All staff complied except you. This demonstrates a lack of respect for my office and the board itself. This is their house and we are their guests. We should conduct ourselves accordingly. Normally such insubordination would be grounds for dismissal, but out of respect for your late father, consider this instead my final warning. 
The board and Director Ash chose me as successor to the office, and no amount of petulance will change that. Indeed, your actions seem to suggest you know better than myself, and by extension, better than the board. Permit me to assure you that this is not possible. Sincerely, Director Broderick Northmore. Charming. Seems like the uh, Bureau hasn't had very many good directors. Oh, hey, we got this from the camera last time. Action Max Camera, Containment Procedure. The item should be isolated from any person or event that is objectively interesting, since its effect is activated by the presence of dramatic incidents. A movie camera used to make commercial feature films. Internal mechanisms are unremarkable. Subjects near the item will often experience a torqued version of reality, resembling the heightened drama and action of a movie. Whether these events are localized, alternate realities, or products of hallucination is currently unknown. Additionally, the item seems to record footage from these incidents and creates VHS copies, edited in the style of short films. During their investigation, agents learned that a podcast titled Brian's Movies Den had reviewed the item-generated movie Delivery Disaster. The podcast's creator, Brian Hennerman, was taken for questioning. The staff of Movie Night, the store Mr. Henneman rented the film from, were also questioned to no effect. So that sounds like it was a more recent acquisition, considering they only knew about it from the podcast. Meaning, how did it end up down here? A document? Is this in some kind of code? Okay, we can't actually read his notes. Word of it. I should take this back to Emily and tell her I got into Ash's secret lab. Right, so that is one side mission down. Fairly straightforward, nothing too annoying or anything. I'm trying to remember now if there were any particularly annoying side missions. I guess the collect Orisha's friends bags was kind of annoying because it's just, hey, wander around the bureau and kill these slightly stronger enemies. And then there wasn't really any resolution to it. Just like, oh, thanks, Jesse, for killing all my friends. All right, uh, let's go back to Crossroads. Give this to Emily. I think at the end of this episode, we'll go back to the Bureau itself. We'll check on uh, Dylan and maybe talk to Arish. Tell him that his job probably just became the full on director of security. Director? Now that Marshall's dead. I found Ash's secret lab. Excellent. Please tell me everything. Spare no details. Uh, well, there was another cave. The walls were covered in paintings of eyeballs. The research seemed dedicated to studying a kind of... smaller version of the nail. It looked like the same material as the one up here, but just a different shape. Well, are you sure you didn't see any functioning prototypes? Or at least some schematics. I was hoping you'd find some cool shit down there. Very accomplished engineer. None. Sorry. I did find this handwritten note. Wow. I had terrible handwriting. Never meet your heroes, right? That looks like a transcribed conversation between Ash and someone named F. Ooh. Oh, this is juicy. This will take me days to parse out. Maybe weeks. This is juicy. I have no idea what have it you says. Ever thought about taking a vacation, Emily? Are you kidding? This is my vacation, Jesse. Also, Jesse, we can't leave the building, so how is she supposed to take a vacation? Now that this nail business is handled, I should probably be getting back to executive. But maybe I'll keep poking around. Just for a little bit. It's funny that she says that, considering she's in both places at once. You know, she's still up in Executive if you go there. Has the nail been doing anything since we restored it? Define anything. Anything unusual? Define unusual? Emily. Sorry, but the answer is a whopping yes. Now that it's whole, the nail is emitting a constant field of, well, think of it like low-level radiation. It seems to suppress any biological matter it encounters. This explains why nothing grows here and why the Bureau had to abandon the area. Prolonged exposure would certainly begin affecting neural processes. 
Wait. Emily, you know that includes you, right? Was the field created when I cleansed the nail? I considered that, but the nail's readings are quite different from the ones I recorded at the cleanse control points. I think the nail's field is purely of its own making. In fact, I think it would passively prevent any his corruption, like the HRAs do. Which makes me wonder what actually occurred when you cleansed the nail. I've been wondering about that myself. Did the board let the Hiss corrupt the nail? Did they want me to cleanse it? If so, why? They need some of your Polaris juice to cancel out the Hiss. Also, I didn't really say anything about it, but at the end of the main story, we saw the former in the pillar field, which, is that supposed to imply that it's no longer trapped in the astral plane, but is actually here, just hanging out? What do you know about Director Northmore? Well, uh, he was Director Trench's predecessor, and Northmore is famous for being the first board-appointed director. He's also locked upstairs. Before he found the oldest house, directors were picked by committees of old men in suits, drinking cognac and smoking cigars or whatever. You know, standard, uninteresting methods. I think the word you're looking for is bureaucratic. Yeah. Or antiquated. Uninteresting. Regardless, Northmore was eventually forced to... Well, <laughs> we don't need to go into that. Strangely, the only two board-appointed directors left the position under uh, unusual circumstances. If the board appoints a director, then how do they retire them? I doubt they go out and buy you a gold watch. Sorry, Jesse, I, I didn't mean to imply that- Don't worry. If anyone's getting shown the door, it's them. Emily has nothing to say about that either. What do you know about an entity named Former? I can't say I've heard of it. You got any details for me? Well, imagine a one-eyed bug thing. I think it was a part of the board, but then something happened and now it's... separate? Interesting. See, I always wondered if the board was some sort of entity or a group or conglomerate of linked consciousnesses, but this supports the group theory. Although it could have undergone some sort of corporeal exile. Too many unknowns to form a working hypothesis yet, but I can prioritize this matter in future astral dives if you think it's important. Fortune favors the prepared. Do it. But actually, maybe just look behind you and you might see it once in a while. I'm gonna keep looking around. I wish I could go with you, but I still need 30 hours of training before I can do field work. We'll work on that. Isn't she pretty much doing field work if she's down here? I mean, you know, technically this is still part of the oldest house. Alright, and now for our last side mission, which is the cave system. We didn't actually find a control point, so I'll have to hop back up there again. But like, I wonder if that mystery is going to get addressed at all. Like, who Dr. Ash was talking to? Though, if it's addressed to F, I guess that's just former, isn't it? Kind of weird, though, because, you know, would he be writing a letter to the giant eyeball monster? What did that actually do? Did it turn the lights on down here? Okay... We've got, like, a containment cube. VHS tape supplement. This item's creation is the source of much research and debate. It was a product of the Bureau's first attempts to film Redacted, Entity A-001, during Operation Shallow Tide. An agent was able to conceal themselves in an area frequented by Ati, at which point they began filming. The agent reported that the video camera showed no signs of disturbance during the filming. Later, when reviewing the footage, the research staff became mesmerized by its altered effect. Measures were taken and altered evaluation began. Never before have bureau personnel been so closely involved in the creation of an altered item. The experiment was quickly replicated, though not with the same results. The footage was simply useless in every subsequent attempt. This event spawned a great debate as to whether altered items are created by paranatural entities, intentionally or otherwise. Similar experiments were prohibited soon after, see the Ash Act for details. 
as the creation of altered materials was deemed an action the Bureau should not engage in, especially considering that their purpose is to contain them, not create them. Though it's, this is the first time we've actually seen any, like, real mention of Ati being... ...paranatural. Like, we've seen some notes about him being weird, but that's about it. Alright. Is that... It's definitely not human, it's a little too big. Kinda weird that there's no mention of what those are. Hmm. So this seems like a door that we can't open from this side. But where else can we go? Is there any anything in the darkness back here? We can't yank out the battery, so I was like, oh, maybe we have to unpower the door. <laughs> Alright, well, it's not that side. Maybe there's something on the other side of the bridge. Hmm. No, this one's just a dead end. Well, I'm pretty sure our side mission is down there. See, was there anywhere else we couldn't get to before? Oh, I didn't actually see this. Found footage. Use the altered item to escape the chasm, but we're not in the chasm yet. You think it would pop up after we hit the bottom? Also, I should probably not. I can't see a thing. Just fall. <laughs> Maybe I should have this through. Maybe I shouldn't have just jumped in a hole. The light. Another TV. Well, it seems to have frozen this fella in place. Is that what the astral entities look like? Wow, this is <laughs> not super helpful. There's no way to hold it straight. It is just recording of Ati sweeping. So I guess we're supposed to want to get away from this thing. Because, well, it's clearly not an astral entity. It's something else. It's like a mud man. But we're supposed to get away from it because it's level 15. So we probably can't kill it. It's so dark. How am I supposed to drag this thing out of here? Like this? We've already figured it out, Jesse. We just gotta keep the TV with us. Which, also, how is this thing even playing a VHS? Is this one of those TVs that has a built in VCR? This is fine, Jesse. Okay, just don't drop the TV. Huh. His TV also turns astral spikes into just a little ball. I mean, this is another interesting kind of variation on the gameplay, because we haven't really had any mission where we needed to keep something with us using our lift power. I keep calling it lift, but it's, uh, it's not lift, it's something else. Launch, that's what it is. <laughs> I've called it lift so many times, but I don't know why they couldn't have just called it throw. 
I guess that's too uh, generic. Okay, we've got another slot here, which means we need to find a battery. This is a really bright television. I mean, these things are creepy, but not particularly dangerous. They're not exactly quick. Oh, there's the battery. Not really sure we needed the light. I mean, it certainly doesn't bother them by itself. It's only the TV's light that does. Need to let my juice recharge. Kind of takes care of that problem pretty neatly. Alright. Carrying on. We are going slowly upward, so... This should be... The way out. Another astral spike. Two ways to go. This could so easily be solved by just having a flashlight. I guess Jesse couldn't exactly tape a flashlight to the service weapon, though, since it would just break as soon as the gun transformed. But maybe, like, one on her suit, you know? One of those clip-on flashlights that are so helpful in Silent Hill. I don't know that we really need the light. Like, sure, now I can see, but I wasn't having that much trouble seeing before with the TV. It's not like we're unlocking doors with these batteries. You know, I'm still not sure why we can't fire the service weapon while we're launching like this. I guess because Jesse's not left-handed. Oh, God. I did not realize how close those guys had gotten. Oh, where is it going to drop me, though? <laughs> I'm going to have to go back to the beginning of the tunnel system. Nope, I'm all the way out here. Great. It's a little annoying that the game never checkpoints in areas like this where you don't have a control point, but I guess most of the time there is control points all over the place. Alright, we're just going to rush through. Why did she just let go of it? <laughs> I like tripped over a rock. The only downside to dashing is that I gotta wait for my energy to come back. I 
wonder what happened if I just dropped this into that pit. Would it just respawn or would it be like, nope, you have to go back now. The weird part is that the batteries respawned, but the things you use them on still have batteries in them. Oh, fuck. Oh, I killed one of them. My mistake. I guess I probably could kill these guys, it's just if they hit me, it's gonna hurt because they're level 15. Okay, freeze them in place. Or, sort of, freeze them in place. And then wall them off. And I don't think these ones that you have to shoot will disappear after you pull them out. Did that. Oh, these ones can fly. <laughs> Just kind of stand in this. Okay, that's all of my health. Thanks. Probably how I died. Oh, okay. There was an astral spike directly behind that. Great. Well, this was an interesting idea, but it's becoming more annoying the further we get in. I guess we couldn't have three good side missions. There always has to be one that's not as good. But hey, it's our last episode, so... I guess we don't need to worry about cutting down the time too much. Just for the attention deficit, I could always make a cut down five minute long video of <laughs> the only things that happen in the episode. And I'll call it the YouTube edition. It's a weird thing, though, because you have these people who are not willing to watch, like, a 40-minute video, and that's fine, but they'll still end up spending 40 minutes watching short videos in a row. Like, they need constant different stimuli, but they still need the same stimuli. It's like people who watch, like, five minutes of a show on cable television, and then switch and just watch five minutes of another show. Completely random parts of them. I never understood that. Like, yeah, I don't always watch long videos in one sitting, but, you know... YouTube saves your position in videos now, so I don't get why people don't just come back to it later. I mean, I spend a lot of my time watching... YouTube uploads of people's streams that are like three, four hours long. And obviously, it's gonna take me a little while to get through those, but just keep coming back to it. You know, watch 20 minutes here, come back later. So I never understood that mentality, but then again. I never understood that go, go, go lack of attention span either. Some people are just born with it. Alright, so I'm going to have to shoot the door to let the astral spike out, and then 
I'm going to have to back off. This thing doesn't even work on them unless they're close range. tight fit, but we made it. Hopefully this doesn't go too much farther. <laughs> We're still quite a ways away from where the door is. Also, is this the only altered item we've encountered that isn't hiss infected? Everything else we had to cleanse, but Ati's video is presumably fine because Ati's not affected by the hiss. Weird, when I did the melee, I actually got some energy back. Freeze. I'm tempted to test what happens if I drop it in the pit, but I don't really want to have to restart if that's what happens. I kind of imagine Jesse just falling over dead. There's the way out. Up there. Back at the cell. Thank God. Alright, so it's just a regular containment mission. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, do we have to press a button? So I was thinking that we didn't really accomplish anything in that mission because, you know, we fell in a hole and then came out of the hole, but I guess we contained an item and someone can come down here eventually to, you know, pick that up, drag it upstairs somehow. Maybe we'll find out where that elevator goes in the warehouse. <laughs> find out what part of the oldest house it connects to. Alright, so that's it. We're finished all the side missions now. The foundation has been wrapped up completely. There's probably a few chests or something I missed, but I'm not worried about that. Obviously, the chests mostly give me useless stuff. And we maxed out our melee. Now the only things I don't have are levitate, seize, and I didn't even bother rebuying shield barrage after that accidental reset. So now let's head back to Central Executive. We'll check on the folks here, and then call it a DLC. I am looking forward to the last one. You know, I assume there's going to be uh, quite a bit more going on in that one than was in this one. And I did very much enjoy Alan Wake, so... I'd like to see how they kind of tie those two parts of their universe to together. Oh, I can't believe... The emergency rations don't include beer. I heard you closed the Hiss portal, or uh, whatever it is we're calling it. If we could just flush out the stragglers. Arish, that was a while ago. I guess we can't say anything new about Marshall. It's still grayed out from when we talked to him before. I'll see you later. You know where I'll be. You know where I'll be, talking to myself at this table while this guy nods at me. Darling definitely didn't ask for anything recently, considering he's, like, in another form of existence. Along with Salvador and Tomasi. Marshall's missing. Darling is somewhere. How are we gonna recover from this? And then he walks away into the corner. <laughs> How you doing, Dylan? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, some time has passed and his hair is all growing back. I don't think we can go through the wall, but you can see that's a nice little detail. I assume he's going to wake up at some point, right? Like, I feel that's, that's also going to be part of the resolution of this story.
He looks a lot more normal now without the completely shaved head. Like, I don't know, he looked a little weird, completely bald, but he just kind of looks like a dude now. He doesn't have any feet hair growing in, though. Alright, and with that, we'll say goodbye to Control for a couple more months until AWE comes out. Which could stand for Altered World Event, Alan Wake Experience, etc, etc. So I've been Shadefire, this was Control, and thank you for joining me, if you did, once again. Take care, everyone.